And um, you know the word the word thando is a Gujarati word. And um, do we have any Gujaratis in the room? Oh, we have one one Gujarati. All right, that's good. So uh, uh, people always think I'm from Gujarat in India uh, because I wrote a book called The Thando Investor, and I have to always correct them and say I'm not Gujarati. Uh, I had a roommate from 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 Gujarat, and um, and uh, he, um, uh, when, I was, when I was doing my undergraduate in engineering, and he was also an engineering major, he used to disappear on weekends because all his uh, family, extended family, had all these motels and laundromats and gas stations and whatnot that they owned in the Carolinas. And then he'd come back on Sunday night, and he'd be bursting with all these stories about uh, the new investments his family had made and all the kind of the economics of those investments. And then in the end, he would finish and say, Monish Dando. And that was his way of saying that uh, the, the literal translation of the word Dando means business. Uh, but the way the Gujaratis use it, what it means is it's a, it's a way of doing business where you basically have upside with almost a non-existent downside, and um, which is the key to investing is, uh, like Buffett says, uh, rule number one, don't lose money. And rule number two, don't forget rule number one. And um, so that was kind of the, uh, the backdrop behind the title and the book. And, um, you know, the Indians make up about 1% of the population of the United States, a little over 3 million people. And uh, the Patels, who are from Gujarat, uh, are a much smaller portion of that three million. My guess is they'll probably be uh, less than one fifth of one percent of the U.S. population, well under uh, half a million or so. And um, and even though they're that small a portion, probably more than sixty percent of the motels in this country are under Patel ownership, and that's a stunning statistic. Um, considering that, you know, 40 years back, there were no Patels over here. So, you know, they went from basically a, a standing start to pretty much dominating uh, this industry. And they've moved up market. So they used to be at the lowest end, the smallest 10, 20, 30 room type highway motels. And now they're, you know, they're buying the Marriott's and the Westerns and the Hilton's and all of that. So they're kind of moving up the, up the chain. And... Um, uh, they they came to the United States as refugees, and most of them came from East Africa, from Uganda. And uh, at that time, in the early 70s, uh, there was this dictator, Idi Amin, who came into power in Uganda. And the Patels actually had come to Uganda several decades, more than 100 years before that. And they came as mostly as indentured laborers. But over time, using their dhando techniques they pretty much controlled large portions of the Ugandan economy. And uh, Idi Amin was very pissed off about that. And his perspective was that uh, Africa is for Africans. And so what he did is he uh, pretty much uh, nationalized all their assets and uh, took over all their personal property and threw them out of the country. And uh, so they were stateless, actually. They, they really had no uh, state to go to. Uh, India was reeling from the Bangladesh uh, war and all the refugees coming from Bangladesh. So India actually refused to take the Patels in as refugees. Uh, England took some. Uh, in the United States at that time, the Nixon administration, they were quite familiar with the issue and uh, uh, they were sympathetic to the plight of the Patels, but they were limited. So they, they took in, the United States took in a few thousand Patels, a few more thousand came to Canada. And uh, most of these Patels who showed up in the U.S., in the early 70s didn't have that much in the way of education and the only money they could really carry with themselves was kind of whatever they could convert into gold quickly a few thousand dollars uh, 